With Moho, you have the ability to add physics to bones, which can make natural looking movements easier to pull off. A good example of this for this character would be adding physics to the ears to make them look floppy as the character interacts, moves his head, body, whatever the case. And there's a lot we can control to make the dynamics look exactly the way we want them to. To begin, we're going to take a look at the copper rig. And if we come over here to the timeline, you'll see that we have just a very simple animation of him jumping. So what I want to do is add physics to the ears. So that way, as he jumps, we have the ears interact with that movement. First, let's go back to frame zero. Because if you go in with your bone selected and add your dynamics to it, let's say at frame 24 or anywhere past frame zero, you will actually be animating the dynamics to turn on and off. And right now, we just want to make sure they're on at the beginning. So on frame zero, we're going to take the select bone tool, lasso one pair of bones, hold and shift, and then lasso the other pair. Now, if we come over here to bone constraints, you'll see that we have a variety of options. And right now, we're just going to pay attention to bone dynamics, which is listed on the bottom. By default, bone dynamics is turned on. So no matter what rig you set up, no matter which bones you draw, this will be the default setting. And you can turn it off if you wish. However, you're not going to see any physics being applied to the ears until you enable angle, position, scale, or wind. That's when you'll see the effects take place. So we're going to come in here and start enabling these features to see what they can do for us. So let's start with the angle. And this might be the most familiar if you are a longtime user of Moho. This is how Moho used to work with just one setting. So if we come in here and turn on angle, and we close this really quick and just preview the animation, you can see by default we have some movement occurring with the ears. And that's what physics are supposed to do for us. Just add a little bit more of a dynamic movement to things to make it look more natural. Now in this case, it might not look exactly how you want it to. And that's where adjusting these different settings can come into play. So coming back here, let's just go to frame zero and then go to our bone dynamics once again by clicking on bone constraints and coming down here to bone dynamics. Now the angle is going to be adjusted based on how we have our bones set up. So it's just going to pivot essentially based on the movements that we have occurring with the head and body. The position will actually change the position of the bone and scale will actually create a bouncing scale effect as we move the bones. Now, more importantly, when setting up your settings, you have torque, spring, damping, and weight. So when it comes to torque, the bigger the value, the more the bones are going to move. So depending on what you have set up here, again, if we were to take a look, you can see that this is how it currently looks. But if we come back to frame zero and let's just change the torque to two and hit close, when we come in here, you can see that there is much more movement being applied to the ears. And if we were to back that up and go to, let's say, 0.5, come in here, you can see that the movement is much more restrained than what it was at before. Now let's come back here to frame zero and go back into those bone dynamics. We have spring next. And spring defines how quickly the bone is going to go back to its original position. And so the bigger the value, the more stiff the bone will look, the lower the value, it's going to have a more soft appearance in its movement. So once again, if we were just to preview this, you can see that this is what it currently looks like when the value is set to 0.8. But if we come back here and let's put the torque up to about one, just so we can get a little bit more movement with this. And then we're going to adjust the springiness here to let's say three, just to kind of give this a more drastic change. You can see here now that they appear more stiff when they're moving. There isn't much movement between the two bones that are attached. It's just kind of going back and forth a little bit. Now, if we come back here to frame zero once again and change this, let's just say to 
something like 0.1. You can see that the movement is more drastic, but also it's a little bit slower. And so coming in here, you can see that that change is very much apparent when you adjust the springiness. Now, if we come back to our bone constraints and come down here to damping, this defines how soon the bone is going to stop its movement. So the bigger the value, the sooner the bone is going to stop. If the value is low, then the bone is going to continue to move for a longer period of time. So once again, if we come in here and let's just put this up to five and we play this out, you can see that it stops pretty quick based on how we have our movements being set up. The angle kind of slowly goes back up based on the values we have here, but still the damping is definitely being applied. And if we come back here and let's say we bring this down to, let's just go again to a lower value and we come in here and we play this out, you can see that it's definitely much more wavy and it just kind of keeps going and going because we have that value so low. And the final option here, if we come back to bone constraints, is the weight. So here, the higher the weight, the harder it is for this effect that you're applying to be pulled off. Just think, if you have a heavier bone, it's going to be harder to move it. But if it's lighter, it's going to have more drastic movements. It's going to be much easier to see what the effects are doing as it's being applied. So if we come in here and we reduce the weight and we try this out, you can see that it's kind of almost going nuts <laughs> because of how light these bones are. And because of the effects we're applying, it just grabs it and runs with it. But here, if we come in and let's just change the weight to something, again, more drastic so we can see the change, you can come in here now and you can see that the weight is definitely being applied and there's less movement occurring. And then you have your wind down here. So we can come in here and apply this. And if we were to take a look, you can see it just essentially makes it look like the ears are constantly being blown by wind, no matter what is going on with the other bones. So now let's go in and tweak this so that the ears look more grounded with the movement. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you can animate bone dynamics. So let's say you're on frame 36 and you go to your bone constraints. And let's just say for whatever reason you click this off, it is on by default, but if it's turned off on the timeline, you can see that we create a key for this, which allows us to turn the bone dynamics on or off as we animate. And that's really nice and can be useful in certain circumstances. So be sure to keep that in mind as you work inside Moho. Right now, we're just going to come in here and remove that key and we'll go back to frame zero. So that way we're not adding any animation. So we can go in and just use the angle for this but we could also turn on position and scale if we want as well. And if we just isolate this, for instance, if we just show position and we play this out, you can see that the bones are definitely moving. They're just kind of jittering a little bit. And again, by going in and adjusting your different settings here, you can change the way that looks. And the same goes for your scale. So if we come in here and just show this, you can see here, that we kind of have this nice bouncy looking effect occurring as the bones stretch up and down. And again, really cool that you can go in and do all that. So let's just turn all these on and see how that's going to go for us. And we'll go back here to frame zero. And first, we're just going to come in and reduce the weight here of angle, let's say to two. And let's change the weight of position to 0.5 and we'll keep scale where it's at. We can come in here and maybe adjust the damping of the scale to move it up so it's not constantly bouncing like it was. And maybe here as well, because it also had that jitter effect with the position. So maybe coming in and upping the damping can work for that. And if we come over here and just play this out, we can see what it looks like right now. And you can see we still have some issues occurring here. So let's just keep going. Come back here, go to your bone dynamics. For the angle, I'm going to up the damping. Let's actually put the damping up to two for each of these. Okay. Coming in here to torque, I'm going to reduce the torque on position as well as scale and maybe even the angle a little bit. And for the springiness, I'm actually going to bring these values down as well. 
So now we come in here and look like this. And let's reduce the wind or remove the wind entirely rather. We can see now that it's starting to look a little bit more like this. Now I feel like there could still be some movement to this. And as we continue to play the timeline, you can see we can make these changes as we move along. So if I come in here and adjust the weight, you can see it's starting to change the way this looks a little bit. And again, you have this nice little bounce effect occurring with these bones. Now, another thing we could do too to rein this in is if we come back to frame zero and we click on each of the bottom ear bones, just like this, go to bone constraints, we can actually add angle constraints as well. So here you can see I have a negative five and five set up for this. It's basically locking this bone down. And if we close this and play this out, you can see now it's locking things in a little bit more, but also still adding a little bit of movement to what's occurring here. So again, you could keep playing with these options to get this where you want it to be. So we could come in here and just keep slightly adjusting things until it's exactly the way we want it. And as you can see, as we keep adjusting here, we're getting closer to an effect that's looking pretty good. Maybe one thing we could do as well, instead of selecting all four bones at once, is select these bottom bones here, come over here to your bone constraints, and perhaps these should have more weight to them. Just a little bit like that. So then when you play this out, you can see now the tops of the ears are moving more than the bottoms of the ears. And again, this is something that we could play around with all day, and you could create the effect that you want by adjusting these options. You can turn your bone dynamics on and off, there is a lot to do here. So if you're looking for a more dynamic approach to how your characters move, you may want to check out the bone physics options.